Hey guys, I'm here fresh faced, you know, messy hair, pajamas still on, but I wanted to make a cow print purse today. This will not be a full tutorial, so that's really what I'm coming up here to let you guys know. I will not be doing a full in-depth tutorial of how to make this purse. Instead, I will be taking you through my process of making this purse. I will be showing you my graph for the cow print and how I follow a graph pattern and also how I follow a pattern that's uh, written in words. I'll also be making a full pattern for this bag and posting it on my Etsy. So by the time this video is up, that pattern should be available on my Etsy. And this video will be showing you how to read that pattern in a sense. So think of this video as more of a crochet with me than a full in-depth tutorial because it's going to be more of you watching my process than me explaining every single step. So with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I did was create this little gauge just to see what the stitches would look like if I used a four millimeter hook and how many stitches it would take to make an inch and how many rows it would take to make an inch. So I made about 12 stitches and then I get my measuring tape and I literally measure the stitches. So as you can see here, it takes one, two, three, four stitches with this hook and this yarn to get an inch. Um, if I used a different size hook or a different brand of yarn, it could possibly change. So you always want to make sure that you create a gauge when you are trying to work on a project that is measurement sensitive. Um, I didn't want my bag to be too big or too small, so I wanted to make sure that I had the correct amount of stitches for the size of bag that I was going for. Anyways, so it takes four stitches to make an inch and it takes about three rows to make an inch. So now that I know that I can calculate how many stitches I'll need to make a bag that is eight by six inches. So now that I know how many stitches and how many rows it takes to make an inch and I know how many inches I want my bag to be, I want it to be eight by six. So since it takes four stitches to make an inch when we're going lengthwise on the bag, I am going to multiply eight by four and that is how many stitches I'm going to need to make it eight inches long. Now for the height, I know that it takes three rows for one inch in height. So I know it takes three rows for one inch in height and I wanna make my bag about six inches high. So I'm going to multiply three by six and that is how many rows I'm going to need to achieve that length. I mean, that height. So I'm going to need 32 stitches for 8 inches long and 18 rows for 6 inches high. So now we go to Stitch Fiddle, which is my favorite website to make any kind of graphs for crochet. Um, and I'll show you guys how I made this graph for the cow print bag. So I click on Create New. Then I click on crochet, then I clicked on crochet with colors, and then from a picture. And then on Google, I just got a picture of some cow print. I played around with a couple of them to see which one I liked the best, and this one was my favorite, so that's the one I moved forward with. It with. And then I click save chart. So Stitch Fiddle will put that image on this huge chart, but because we know how many rows and how many stitches across we're going to be doing, we can delete all the other rows that don't meet our stitch requirements per se. So I know I need 18 rows as far as height. I'm going to delete these little, these plain rows down here because we don't want those. So I click edit edit chart and then I delete these rows down here because I don't want any plain white rows down. 
and then I find the 18th row. Up here, it'll tell you which row your cursor is on. So we're on 10, and we find 18. Okay, and then from the 19th row, we click and we delete everything above the 18th row here. We scroll up and we delete all those rows because we won't be using them. And we also know that we need 32 stitches across. So we find the 32nd stitch and then from the 33rd, we highlight and delete. So this is what we're left with. What in the world? Why do we have more than 18 rows here? Sorry, we had more than 18 rows. I'm gonna go ahead and delete those rows that we don't need. And this is what we're left with. 32 stitches across, 18 rows high. And this is what our little cow print bag is gonna look like. So the image kinda tries to color match and includes these like gray squares, but we won't be using them. What you can do is turn them to black squares or turn them to white squares. So I don't really like the gray squares, so I'm gonna turn them all to white squares. So I click on the white. Oops, sorry, I clicked on it too many times. I click on the white and then I just click away at those gray squares. Okay, so that's how I create my graph for the cow print pattern. The other one was just for an example. Um, this is the one that I originally created and this is the one that the pattern on my Etsy will be for. Um, and this one has about two extra rows just for a teeny little bit of extra height and a few extra stitches for a little bit of extra width as well. Um, so yeah, I realized that when you make a graph that is like this, you need to make sure that the rows are alternating. So row one goes this way, row two goes this way, row three goes this way, row four goes this way. To do that, you want to click on the title, then you want to click on direction, and you want to click on alternating starting from right to left. That's very important. And this is just a rough draft of my own version. It includes stitches and abbreviations. It has the hook size, the yarn that I used, how many skeins, everything else that I used. I'll put some notes here. There'll be more notes in the finished draft of this pattern, but this is just the rough draft. And then we have everything else. So now we have both the written pattern and the graph pattern pulled up just so that I can show you guys how these two things correlate. So for the foundation of this bag, we're going to be chaining 36 stitches according to the written version of this pattern. So chain 36. Okay, now we have 36 chains. So the first color we're gonna be starting with is black. So we're gonna get our black yarn and we're gonna switch colors. I'll be starting with some scraps that I have from a project that I just finished. So we're gonna be switching colors. So I'm going to yarn over with our old color, go into the stitch, yarn over with the new color, pull up, then yarn over and pull through with the new color. I'm also gonna be tucking the old color along the way. I do have a video that shows you how to tuck the colors instead of having a whole bunch of ends to weave in. So according to the graph and the written pattern, we're going to need to do 
five black half double crochets. So the graph shows you we need one, two, three, four, five black half double crochets. And we already made one, so I'm gonna continue with four more. Okay, I'm back. So for row two, we're gonna start off with five black half double crochets. My yarn is starting to get a little tangly. One, two, three, four, our last one. And then pull through with the new color. Boom. Next, we have eight white half double crochets. So next, we have three white half double crochets. And I've already done one, two, and on the last one, we switch colors and pull through with the black. Boom. Then we have 15 black half double crochets. You want to also make sure that you're pulling your tucked color to make sure that it's not leaving spaces in the back. So pull your tucked color, not too tight. And then our last stitch, we're switching colors. Per usual, like so, like that. And then we have seven white half double crochets. So we continue. And then last but not least, five black half double crochets. Two. And that is the end of row two. I mean, you can kind of see that the color is tucked in there, but barely, only if you're looking real hard. And I'm not concerned about that one bit. We're going to continue on to row three. And I know the pattern doesn't say it right now because this is just a rough draft. But at the end of each row, you're going to chain one and turn. So row three begins with five black half double crochets. So chain one. Next we have seven white double crochets. So one, two, three. Now I think you guys should be getting the hang of what we're doing here. So after we finish with the seven white half double crochets, we do 14 black, three white, six black, chain one, turn, and then continue. Um, I'm not gonna be explaining every single row because this is just gonna make this video way too long. So I'm just gonna, you know, commence with the crochet with me and, you know, have y'all sit here and watch me crochet this cow print bag. I'm in